Happy Father's Day to all of you. And I believe my beautiful wife has something to share this morning. <laughs> Is that an introduction? That's an introduction. This is <laughs> Jennifer, just take my it beautiful over. No, wife. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, what I want to talk to you to Anne, wow, what you had to say about the Word of God this morning was awesome. The, it is so true. And the thing about it is, is not only God's Word lasts forever, but it's, all, it's, it's the truth and it lasts forever. And that's why it's called the incorruptible seed. Because nothing can keep it from coming to pass absolutely nothing. So Romans 4, 19 and 20, I'm going to read this to you. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old in the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. With the promise, even with the promise of Isaac, and even the first time God spoke to him about when he told him to leave, he only told him once. That was it, just one time. And, um, and, and the thing about it is, is even though it was told to him once, he chose to believe it right then. Yeah. It, was, it was his choice and he chose to believe. Um, and when he heard it, even though he only heard it once, he, um, that because he chose to believe, he responded. It made him respond because he was in faith to what he heard. It made him respond. And that's the way we're supposed to be. Yes. It's not a work. It's a doing what you've heard because you believe it. Come on. It's as simple as that. And again, it's the incorruptible seed of the Word of God. <clears throat> and not only that, the thing about it is, if you think about it, we have the privilege. We, we don't just get to hear it once, but we get to see it every day. That's a privilege. Yes. You, I mean, Abraham didn't have it written down. He had it here. But we have the privilege of every word that God has spoken to be written down for us, for us to be able to go and look and see. And obviously, you're going to find something new every time you go in. Because <laughs> he's always a giving God and giving us all good things. So my, I'm, just, I'm just encouraging you, be like Abraham's seed. Plant, plant that incorruptible seed in your heart every day. Amen. Awesome. Thank you very much. Let me help you down. We were at a, a Cracker Barrel and um, about a week ago and, and, and so as, as we left, I, um, um, I was opening, uh, I went first, I held the door open for Jennifer and then there was another lady um, a little bit older behind Jennifer that, and so I held the door open for her as well and and she said um, uh, she said wow she goes thank you so much there's still gentlemen in the world today you know and I said well it's taken about 20 30 years but Jennifer's finally trained me <laughs> you know and so and so we, we talked for a minute and we walked on out to the uh, to the car and um, and so I went and I opened the car door you know for Jennifer to to get in and, and she goes, she goes, oh, I see how it is. That lady might have still been watching, so now you're gonna open the door for me. <laughs> I, got, I got in the car and she goes, I just want you to know, I'm calling bull on that. <laughs> so, you know, it is, it is what it is. So, you know, I, I'm gonna start trying to help you down and honor you in the way that we should. So we do a weaker vessel, you're not, but you know. Sarah called Abraham Lord, yes. We do have a good, good father. Father God, you know, the, the story of the prodigal son, uh, a lot of times we can, we can use that story as, as a, a representation of what, you know, what it's like, you know, if you were a prodigal, if you, had, if, if you had turned away from God, if you had gone your own way, you know, and we use that as, as a way of saying, look, there's redemption, there's grace for you. But you know, really, really the story is about the father. It's not about the prodigal. It's about the father. It's about the father's heart. It's about 
when the prodigal came home and just wanted to, to, to live as a servant, the, the father says, no, put on him the best robe. No, this is my son. You know, and, and you see that he saw, <clears throat> man, already, he, that you, you see that, his, that, that, he, that he saw his son coming from afar off because he was looking for him. Every day he was looking for him. The father always looking, you know, to restore to fellowship, looking to restore to life, looking to restore to, to, to the best that he has for you. And, and I just want to give thanks to our father. Father, we just love you this morning. We thank you for your grace and your mercy and your love to each and every one of us. Father, we just thank you. You are so good. Every good gift, every perfect gift, the word says, comes down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness. That's what your word says about you, neither shadow of turning. And so we just thank you for, for all the good that you're doing in our lives, for everything that you've done through Jesus. And we just honor you this morning and we thank you for your love. To each and every one of us that it's an unconditional love that because of, of what Jesus did on the cross he removed our sins as far as from the east as from the west and that you look at us through the blood of Jesus and that's a righteous blood and you have declared us righteous you have declared us your children you have declared us joint heirs with Jesus Christ and so we honor you this uh, this morning father god in jesus name come on everybody said amen. amen glory to god he's good well last week i started a, a new series living the changed life living the changed life not how to live a changed life or not how to change your life but living the changed life why is that Oh, this is so good. It's, it's, I'm already getting excited about it. It's, Jesus came, when, when Jesus came, not only did he come to redeem you from sin, not only did he come to set you free, but he came to change your life so that you wouldn't have to live life like everybody else. He came so that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. But not only that, he did it in a way, not just, not just so that I have a personal relationship with him. That's awesome. He came so that I would be in union with him, union with God in the same measure and in the same way that Jesus is in union with God. He said, Father, as he prayed in John chapter 17, Father, he said, I pray that they may be one in us the same way that we are one together that's an awesome awesome prayer he said I pray that they would understand and see that you love them with the same love that you love me with can you get a hold of that that the Father God loves you right now as much as he loves Jesus he doesn't love you a little bit less he doesn't, li he, he, doesn't, he doesn't just put Jesus a little bit above you and say, but he's really my favorite. He says, I love you as much as I love my only begotten son. The same, the, the, the same son that he said, this is my beloved son. This is the son of my love in whom I am well pleased. Child of God, he says about you that you are his beloved son. You are the, his beloved daughter. You are his beloved child in whom he is well pleased. Amen. He loves you that much. Jesus came not only, not only to, uh, to, to bring us into union with the Father, but to take us out from under the influence and under the control of the kingdom of darkness. That's what Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 says. He has delivered us. He has uh, uh, translated us, moved us from the kingdom of darkness. Look, that ain't just a little bit of darkness. That ain't just, you know, some darkness in your life. Get it. He moved us from another power, from another authority, and moved us into the kingdom of of his dear son we are now part of a different kingdom we don't understand that sometimes here in the united states you know i mean we know about the king or the queen and all of that over in 
in England, but, but we really don't have a real context for that uh, because uh, since, since we're in a democracy and since we all get to vote, we don't understand what it means to live under the rule of a king. But the rule of a king means what the king says goes. What the king decrees is what's law. What the, what the king decrees is what's true. And so God, through Jesus Christ, has decreed some things about you. Man, it's, when, when you were born again, when you received Jesus, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that if any man be in Christ, he is a new, somebody say new, new creature. We were praying, we pray on Saturday mornings at 9 o'clock. Feel free to come any Saturday morning at 9 o'clock. It's an awesome time of just corporate prayer together. And, um, and, but, but different people get different things from the Lord. And one of the things that that guy here uh, um, was praying and, and, and he got is, is, he said, do you remember, uh, he said, Lord said, you, you know that show Fixer Upper? Yeah. How many of y'all like to watch these Fixer Upper shows and and, and, and this old house and, and all that. Jennifer loves that stuff. I do not. It costs me money. Hey, this would look nice. This would look great. This would... All I'm hearing is cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. It's great stuff. Well, fixer-upper. Are you a fixer-upper? Did, did, God, did, did God make you a fixer-upper? Did he fix you up? No. No, he started all over. You are a new creation. Yes. You are a new building. You are a new household of God. He says, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 5, Jesus said, he makes all things. Somebody say all things. All all things new. I just wrote down some things that are new in the new covenant. That when you move into the kingdom of God, that what happens is everything becomes new. This is all scripture, by the way, that, that we're in a kingdom with a new king, Jesus Christ. Uh, it is a new and living way. It is a new creation. We are told to put on the new man. I have a new garment and I am clothed in righteousness. It's a new wineskin. In other words, it wasn't that God was just pouring the Holy Ghost into my old way. It was that he recreated me so I could be a container for all the anointing, all the power, all the Holy Ghost in my life. Glory to God and what he wants to do. Praise God. It is a new covenant that we are now a part of. And now I get to speak a new language. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. It's a new commandment that he's given us to love one another. It's a new life that I have. I now have a new spirit on the inside of me. The Bible says I'm a new lump. That means that I affect other people everywhere that I go. Praise God. I have a new name. I sing a new song and I'm in a new heaven. Glory to God. And, and there's a new earth that is coming, but I live in the new Jerusalem and all things are new. So I wrote it this way. I am, and I capitalize the word am because it comes from God. He is I am that I am and he lives on the inside of me. I am a new man. I have a new spirit living a new life in New Jerusalem. I am a citizen of a kingdom ruled by a new king. Glory to God. Jesus, the living word, king of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. He is the author of the new covenant. And because of his blood, I am clothed in the new clothes of righteousness. I have a new name and I am singing a new song. I talk in a new language and I live according to a new and living way. I am God's new creation creation created in Christ Jesus for good works. Amen? That's what's new about you. That's what the Word says about He's made all things new. Praise God. And so we get to now live our life in the kingdom of God. And so when I say living the changed life, your life has already been changed your spirit recreated, you're now in a new kingdom. Now, how do you live that life out? 
it's great to talk about these things. It's great to say, man, I'm seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus is what the Bible says. But how does heaven find its way into my life? How does the, new, how does the kingdom operate in my life? Because if Jesus came for me to have a better life, then I want to live that life out. So I'm going to live out what is true about me. I want to live that out. It, it needs to be expressed in every area of my life. So, so how do I live that out? That's what this series is about, living the changed life. So we're going to talk about that. The Bible says in, in Romans chapter 12, verse 3, it says that we are, we are not to be conformed. We're not to be conformed. Let's pull that up on the screen. Romans chapter 12, verse, actually verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Be not conformed to this world. That, that speaks to that the, the world has a way of doing things. The, 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 the media and, and the things that you hear and the things that you watch on television and the things that you see on Facebook and on the Internet and all of that is all, is all trying, to, trying to get you to conform and try to think like they think and try to have opinions like, 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 like they have opinions. You know, nowadays, I mean, it's, it's, you know, you've got the thought police that are out there that's trying to tell you and trying to shame you into thinking like they think. And if you don't think like they think, then that just means that, uh, 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 that you're not right and, and, and they need to do a law or they're going to protest against you and all that kind of stuff. We see what's going on in our nation right now is, is, is Satan is not liking what's going on. And so what's happening, he's trying to stir people up to try to shame people into thinking the way and to be confused form to this world. The, the devil doesn't want people thinking independently. The devil doesn't want people going to the word by themselves and start trying to and, and find out that there's real freedom. No, no, no. What would be better is if you just think like you're taught in universities and public schools and if you would just depend on the government for all your needs, you know, and, and so, I mean, as a matter of fact, I mean, China is closing up in the sense that um, uh, the communism over there, they have now said very boldly that everybody should worship our government. Everybody needs to worship that. And, 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 and so any church has to come under that and make the government and communism the first priority. That just, that's just happened in the last month that a top ranking official has, has made it very clear as they've been cracking down on churches and Christianity and stuff like that. Ultimately, that's what this is all about, is to try to move people away from freedom, move people away from, from, from freedom that is in Christ Jesus and begin to be conformed, which means we gotta be boxed in. We gotta be boxed in. And, and so by doing that, man, I didn't mean to go this way today, but, but let's, let's just deal with it for just a second. So, so how's, what's the tactic of the enemy? Because you got to be able to identify it because if we're gonna live the changed life, it means that you're gonna to have to start thinking differently. It's not, living the changed life isn't about just coming to church and hearing some good word for yourself it's about, it's, about, it's about living and teaching your family and living in such a way that your life, that you stand out from everybody else. You weren't called to conform. You weren't called to be like everybody else. You were called to stand out. You were called to do something. You weren't called to go downstream along with the rest of the world. You were called to go upstream, you know, to experience the best of God in your life. And so one of the things that, that, that Satan has tried to do in our nation is try to divide people based on groups. Try to get your identity in the color of your skin, your identity in your political persuasion, whether you're a Democrat, whether you're a Republican, your identity based on your sexual orientation now, that's what's going through. In other words, are your identity in your economic class? Are you poor? Are you middle class? Are you upper class? How do you identify yourself? And if, if you can figure out where you fit in that group, then let's start thinking like that group, and it's called groupthink. 
And so now, now that I'm in that group, I'm, being, I'm allowing my, my thinking and my way of life to be conformed to my identity, which is in this group of people, and, and I'm comfortable here. And what you've just done is you've just yielded yourself and you've been, and now you're conformed, which will box you in and you, and uh, how do I say this? You, you've just limited what God's able to do in your life because you now live your life according to a wrong identity. My identity, first of all, is I'm a son of God. I am in a different kingdom. If I want to have group think, then my group thinks going to be according to the group that listens to the word of God. My group thinks going to be according to children of God, to sons of God, to the kingdom of God. Let's all get together and let's just learn what the word of God says and let's encourage each other and lift each other up and say, come on, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And if God be for me, who can be against me? That's my number one identity. My, my number one citizenship is in the kingdom of God. Now, see, here's the, here's the whole thing about the kingdom. This world was created out of that kingdom. Let's bring that scripture back up. Be not conformed to this world. Yeah, but, but, but pastor, there's, there's injustice. There has always been injustice. Thank you, Adam and Eve. And laws and... and uh, um, Oh, uh, how do I say it? And, 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 and everything that's going on in the nation trying to, trying to right the wrong, none of that's going to happen through human effort, through being conformed to this world, through allowing, as an example, sex education now that's, that's going into our elementary schools and, and the things that they're teaching there. And when they first started it 20 and 30 years ago, they said, oh, it'll never get worse than this. And so Christians just kind of sat by idly. And now, and it continues, they continue to push the envelope. They continue to push the envelope uh, in our media. They continue to push that. And what are we going to do? Are we, are we going to stand up and be bold and say, no, th this is what righteousness is. Or are we going to continue to be conformed to that and laugh along with everybody else at the jokes and the things that are made that do not line up with the righteousness of God? We've been changed to live a different life, to, to model something different. The grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness and to live righteously and to live soberly in this world. That's what Titus says. We're called to something different. And there's a reason why. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Somebody say transformed transformed by the renewing of your mind. You're constantly making your thought patterns new. What is new about you and your born again spirit, you've got to You've got to put the Word of God in. You've got to go to the Word. Yeah, but you know, my church said this, or my preacher said this. I don't care what your church said. I don't care what your preacher said. I really don't care what I say. Is it in the Word? Yeah, but our doctrine that I grew up with, I don't care about your doctrine. What does the Word of God say? Because the Word of God has forever been settled in heaven. And what he has spoken is what's true. And when that word is believed, then that is what will become true in your life. I will say it again. The word that is believed becomes true in your life. He says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove. The reason for this is so that you get to, man, get this. It's, it's not just so you think different. It's not just so you live different. It's so that you get to prove, experience, and know in your life what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Well, where do I find the good and acceptable and perfect will of God? I go to the Word. I get to see this. I get to find out what His will is. Guess what? When it comes to my body, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 says, In His own body He bore my sins, that, he, that I might be the righteous 
righteousness of God in Christ, by whose stripes I was healed. Psalm 107 verse 20 says he sent his word and he healed me. Glory to God. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 10 verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about healing all. Not some, not most, not a few, because he's so sovereign, healing all that were oppressed by the devil. Man. Guys, you've got to watch Wednesday night's sermon. I've been doing this series on Galatians, and we've been going through it in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through faith. And so what we did on Wednesday night is we just went through what the curse of the law is. I read through every single one, and it talks about like what Dad was talking about. The Bible says your, your children will be taken from you to a strange people. And so, the, and so that means I'm redeemed from my kids being taken away. I'm redeemed from them going under the world system I'm redeemed from them following after a strange voice. They're going to serve the living God all the days of their life and they will fulfill what God has called them to do in the name of Jesus. I got the word of God on it. It goes through every single curse that we're redeemed from. You ever heard of generational curses? That was a big thing, you know, people. You know, if you got a problem, maybe you're under a generational, uh, generational curse. People have bought into that lie. If we're redeemed from the curse, that covers every, that covers anything. That covers a generational curse, if there is such a thing. That covers, uh, 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 you know, being cursed in, in any particular area. Even if, even if I mess up, it means I am redeemed from the curse, not because of what I do. It's because of what Jesus did, and he turned right around, and because of his love, grace, and mercy, gave me his blessing. The same blessing that was on Abraham. Man, I just want to preach the whole thing, but I can't. So you have to go two weeks ago on Wednesday night to find out what the blessing is. We defined it. You have to define it by the Word of God. Because it, it, blessing for us, sometimes we think, I am going to preach it too. The blessing, sometimes we think that, man, uh, 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 I got a raise and I'm blessed. Man, somebody gave me enough money to make an extra house payment. I'm blessed. Man, I was able to buy a, a, a new set of clothes. I'm blessed. Man, you don't even know what blessing is. Because when it says that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through faith, I need to know what the blessing of Abraham was. I need to let that define it. And so what you find is Abraham, like Jennifer was talking about, God spoke to him one time. Let's just look at it. Go to Genesis chapter 2. We're living the changed life. Uh, th this is all going to tie in. But man, I'm telling you, God has something so good planned for you. Man, he knows the purposes. He knows the plans. And he says, if you'll just let me, man, if you'll just follow after me, then he says, I will show you the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. You'll live. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on, you can't live in the kingdom. Well, let me, let me rephrase. You can live in the kingdom and not get the benefits from the That's kingdom. Right. You can be in it all the days of your life because many Christians have done it. They have lived it and they have died because they thought their blessing was when they got to heaven and didn't realize that there, that there was ways according to the word of God for you to experience his best in your life right now. Jesus wants you to experience. I'm telling you, he wants to, uh, ex you to experience life in a way that you never thought possible. He wants to, he, the relationship that he wants for each one of you to have with him is to hear his voice every single day, to just walk with him, to talk with him. That's the reason why Jesus did. Now, I'm just about to get in your face right here for a little bit, okay? <laughs> All right, so, so wake up. Don't go to sleep in this section over here for a little bit. Listen, Jesus, God walked with Adam in the cool of the day. Had fellowship with him. Adam messed it all up. Separated from God. So God decided to fix that. 
sent Jesus. Not so that he could walk with us, but he could walk in us. Live in us. I don't have to wait to the cool of the day for God to show up so that I can walk with Him. I have Him 24-7 with me, a relationship with me. His love is abounding towards me all the time. He is leading me. He is guiding me. He is directing me. I will not stumble. He says He makes my feet just like hind's feet. I mean, just like those, those goats, those rams up on the rock that's on the, they are so sure-footed. That's the way He's made me, glory to God. That's the life that I I live hallelujah I get to live in that confidence I get to know I don't have to live a life confused you don't have to live a life confused well God what am I going to do today well God what am I going to do tomorrow I don't know what I'm going to do uh uh his sheep hear his voice he leads and he guides and he doesn't ever cause you to mess up mm. that's living in the kingdom but a lot of people go through life confused, in doubt, in darkness, because they don't know what is rightfully theirs. They don't know what has been given. That's why Jesus said, seek first the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. you you're, about to, you're about to step into a place called the blessing. You're about to experience blessing in every area of your life. Mm, glory to God. I, I just... I'm, I'm, I'm holding it together right now. Genesis chapter 12. The first thing that God said to Abraham. In verse 2. I am going to make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. Well, see, we're starting to get an idea of what God's idea of blessing is. He says, I'm going to bless you, but I'm going to make your name great. People are going to know who you are. Remember those devils that those people tried to cast out? We try to ca we're casting you out by, the, by Jesus whom Paul preaches. The devil said, Jesus we know. And Paul we know. But who are you? You better know who you are. He wants to make your name great. He wants, he wants people to know who you are. I will bless them that bless you. What that means is that people... People are blessed because they bless you. That, that God's favor and that God's blessing on your life should be extended to people around you. In other words, the blessing of God isn't just for you. You're blessed to be a blessing. Say, I'm blessed to be a blessing. You should live your life being blessing-minded. Finding areas. How can I bless? How can I help? How can, how can I be a blessing? Because you, you, you live from such a place of sonship, of, of being a child of God, of being a king and a priest. That's who he's created us to be. Kings don't go around begging for money. Kings don't go around with their hand out hoping that people, you know, are given to them. The kings don't. That's not their language. Kings decree a thing and they are established. Kings understand that they are already blessed and that's who God created us to be. We got to start living with a different mentality. Yeah, but pastor, you don't know what I've done. You don't know how I've lived my life. You don't know. Stop, stop, stop it. I told you, I, I, I'm going to get on you. Okay, because we're not talking about being manby pamby Christians. They just kind of go through the life, to, you know, tiptoeing through the through the lilies, you know, and 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 you know, and oh, isn't it so wonderful? And we're just so saved, and it's so great. And Father, I'm no longer a slave to fear, and it's awesome. No, the righteous are bold as a lion. They that know their God shall do great exploits. And your identity must be rooted in who God created you to be. And you move over into that place. And you let the past go. And Paul said this one thing I do. I, I forget those things that are behind. I forget my past. Y'all hadn't murdered no Christians? Y'all hadn't put no Christians in jail? Paul did all those things. And God so changed him. I, God just made him so new that his name no longer was Saul. He just changed it to Paul. He said, he said, I don't even think about that stuff anymore. 
He said, I just pressed towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. He lived from a place of victory. He lived from a place of knowing who he was in Christ Jesus. Where did he get that from? The Word of God. Amen. The Word of God. And so God says, I will bless them that bless you, curse them that curses you, and in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. And so some things happen. And then we find in chapter 13 that after Abram had gone down into Egypt, that apparently the Lord did exactly what he said he was going to do. Yes, sir. Oh, man. I got another scripture I'm about to go to. Thank you, Jesus. And it says in verse 2 that Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Man, God blessed him far above. I mean, you just have to read through the life of Abraham to see just how blessed he was. And so when it says that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through faith, make sure that your definition of the blessing meets God's definition and not your own. That's right. That's right. Amen. But you, gotta, you can listen to two weeks ago to get more of that, praise God, on Wednesday night. Turn with me to Num Numbers chapter 19. Now, God said that the word, I, I, I said last week, I, I ended saying, are you one of the crowd? So for you that weren't here, um, there are three types of people that Jesus ministered to. Are you one of the crowd? So crowds followed him and Jesus spoke to them in parables and they didn't understand what he had to say. And the disciples said, why do you speak to them in parables? He said, because it's given to you to know the kingdom of heaven, uh, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but not to them. What was the difference? They were a disciple. They had left all to follow him. They say, you know, when everybody left him after one sermon, that's a bad, uh, that would, to me, I mean, you know, if all of y'all got up and left because of something I preached, I would have a bad day. Jesus had that happen. He started preaching, you're going to have to eat my flesh, drink my blood, and that was too much for the crowd to understand. And they said, uh-uh, we ain't into cannibalism, we're out of here. And so he turned around, his disciples, his only ones left. They said, you want to go too? But here's what they said. Who else has the words of life? See, they had so, they had so committed to receiving and, and letting their lives be governed by the word that was coming forth out of Jesus' mouth. There's no way they're going to give that up, see. Are you one of the crowd? That just shows up, attends, find a good worship time, all that kind of stuff, and hey, it's a good event. In John chapter 8, he said to those Jews that believed on him, are you a believer? Are you one that just believes? That's a, that, that represents a lot of Christians. They believe, they're Christians, they know that they're going to heaven, and yes, you will, and their sins are forgiven. But then he says to those believers, if you continue in my word, then you'll be my disciples. And that's where you start finding the mysteries of it. That's where revelation comes. Why? Because you've set yourself. You've set your, your affections on the things above. You've set yourself on the Father. You said, I'm going to let my life be governed by the word. Jesus, listen to me. Jesus is the living word of God. And the Bible says that the government now rests on his shoulders, which means I've got to let my life as a kingdom citizen to be governed by the word of God. And we'll give you an example of that here in just a second. But I want, I want you to see this in Numbers chapter 19. Thank you, Father. So, you know, because the question is, how do I let my life be governed by the word how what does that look like and is that um is that a work is it something that i have to do or no 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 it's 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 not what you do it's 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 how you live it is a life of faith the just shall live by faith and so what it is is making a choice to believe what god has said um and so in numbers uh, is it uh, where is it it's Numbers chapter 23, sorry. That's verse, verse 19. There's a prophet that some, a king tried to pay to curse the children of Israel. Balaam, did you ever, you know the story about Balaam and, and his, his donkey ended up talking to him because he was disobeying God? Uh, anytime a donkey starts talking to you, you better check where you're going. I'm just saying, that's a good time to, re, to examine your life because you are headed in the wrong direction. So 
so, so Balaam was paid to curse the children of Israel. All right? He was paid by this king to curse them because the king was afraid that, he, that, that Israel, I mean, they knew that God was with them and that there was nothing that they could do. And so, ba Balaam, in verse uh, uh, 19, said to this king, he tried every which way he knew to do to curse them and, and, and to ask God's permission. And he said, look, here's the deal. God is not a man. That's revelation for some of you right there. <laughs> The God of the universe, now he came as a man, but he don't operate the same way that, that we do. That's right. You know, we tell somebody, hey, I want to meet you tomorrow at this time. Okay, that sounds good. And then you call and say, hey, I can't do it. You know, or, or, or hey, uh, you know, you, we, we break our word all the time. He says, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? He said, if he said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it. Now get this. God's the one that's responsible to make it good. Derek mentioned this. He said, I will hasten. God said this in Jeremiah chapter 1. I will hasten my word. I will go after. I will run after my word to perform it. I want to make... See, see, what you don't understand is the God of the universe through Jesus Christ is sitting right there on the inside of you and he is there just waiting. The Spirit of God at the very beginning of creation, uh, it says, was hovering over the face of the water. He, what was he waiting on? Get this. He, he's, waiting, he, he's waiting for the word of God to come forth. Let there be light so that he could then, you know, do what the word said and manifest that word in this physical realm. You got the Holy Ghost on the inside of you that is waiting for the word to come forth and to be spoken so that he can hasten it to perform it in your life. See, you're not the one doing this thing. God's the one doing this thing. God's looking for an opportunity. He says his eyes are running to and fro throughout the whole earth looking for somebody. Come on. Looking for somebody. Yeah. Are you somebody? Yeah. I somebody. Yeah. Looking for somebody yeah. that he can show himself strong on their behalf. I said he's looking for somebody. He's looking for somebody that has decided I'm going to speak the word. I'm going to live my life according to the word. Now, God, when I rest in what you have said, whoo, then just come on with it. Do your thing. Have your way. Here's Balaam trying to curse the children of Israel, and he gets a revelation. God's not a man. I can't get him to change his mind. I have tried to get him to change. I have tried to get, but he has decreed a thing. And he goes on to say right here, he is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said it, shall he not do it? Hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? We'll stop there a lot of times, but let's go on. Behold, I have received a command. I've received a command to bless. I mean, think about it. this guy's going, going to God. God, I got to look. This king wants me to curse. God, curse this. Come on, God. And God said, Uh uh. I have all this is Abraham's seed. I have get a hold of this. This is Abraham's seed. That, that promise, that promise, that promise wasn't to them. That promise isn't, wasn't to the, 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 these two or three million Jews that, that kept limiting God and kept, you know, complaining to God. That, that was not, that's not the promise he was fulfilling. Oh, no. He, he, he went all the way back to a man by the name of Abraham. And he said, I, he said the blessings on him and his seed. And so I've already done that. I can't change my... God's will for your life and God's purposes for your life cannot be set aside because of your stupidity. 
He's got a plan for you. And if you'll just hook up with His plan, and if you'll just say, I'm going to yield to what you want from my life, God, and get myself in a place that the blessing is flowing in my life, that I am now connected to you, glory to God, that I'm allowing the Holy Ghost to operate in my life. Woo! Come on. He says, I have received a command to bless. And he has, that's past tense, by the way. That's the changed life, by the way. That's being moved into a different kingdom, by the way. That you're no longer under the kingdom of darkness. But that's a, a command that you're in a place that the blessing is on your life. He has blessed and I cannot reverse it. Get this. This prophet, this prophet was, was trying to do everything he could to undercut the blessing of God in, that's over these people, the protection of God that was over these people. But if this prophet could not change the blessing of God on a people, there ain't nobody that can keep you down in your job, in your family, uh, in your finances, that you better, you better stop blaming other people for your problems in your life. I don't care what somebody's done to you in the past. I don't care what's going on. I know it hurts. I know it's injustice. I know that. But guess what? It's time for you to move from a place of being a Saul over to a place of being a Paul. Start saying, I'm going to leave the old thing behind because I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. That God has bless me he's given a command the Bible says if you be Christ then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise of being blessed come on so thank you very much I think I'm just going to identify now as a child of the Most High God I think I'm going to identify because that's what he has decreed and his word is forever settled in heaven in my life and so I'm going to just mix faith with that and just choose to believe what he has said and allow him to hasten his word to fulfill that in my life child of God you are blessed. Amen. The blessing of God. Oh, well, yeah, I wish I was blessed. That'll keep you from it every single time. Get, listen to me. You look at your natural circumstances. You're looking at your situation. You look at your debt. You're looking at your body. You're looking at what people have done to you. You're, you're looking at the wrong thing. The Bible says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Hebrews chapter 11 says this. It says that we understand that by faith that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made out of things which do appear. There's nothing you can do in the natural that can ever get close, ever scratch the surface of what God has planned for your life. Yeah, but I've got dreams. I've got, I've got this. I, let me tell you something. God's dreams for you is better than your dreams for yourself. I would rather hook up with God's dreams any day. Yeah, but can I trust that? I, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I, I, just read through Hebrews chapter 11. It's a whole... Do you, do you know that the Bible is full of stories of misfits full of stories of people uh, let me just say it this way it's full of stories of screw-ups people that didn't deserve to be blessed people that you wouldn't think that God would ever use certainly people that haven't haven't lived the same way that you have and you see God's hand on them and you see that once I mean uh, God is no respecter of persons any person that trusts God any person that believes it says by faith Abel did this by faith Enoch by faith Abraham by faith Isaac by faith Jacob by faith do you, you know what they all have in common all of that was before the law I was reading it this morning with the exception of Jericho, every by faith was before the law. Amen. And when the law came in, people stopped living by faith. 
but the just shall live by faith. That's where the blessing is. That's where the full experience, that's where you experience the grace of God in His full abundance, in His full measure. It's that full surrender and that full trust to God, not just with one part of your life, but with all of your life. It's being Peter and James and John that left all to follow him. That when he, uh, there was something about him. I mean, the word, listen, the word called out to them. The word called out and said, follow me. The word is calling to you today and saying, follow me, follow me, follow me. The living word of God is calling you into your destiny, calling you into the blessing, calling you to live a life that you can't possibly dream of. That's why it says, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man. Everything that God has prepared for them that love them. But if you want to find it out, he reveals them to you by his spirit. Amen. We live in the spirit. We're going to talk through this some more. Let me just say this. I, I, I've just got to. Uh, um, and I'll, I'll give you a shortened version of this story. Because I want to give you an example of what it means to live your life according to the Word of God. When I was 15 or 16 years old, many of you have heard this story, many of you have not. Um, I, I spent the night with my brother at uh, my aunt's house, and that night I had this, um, uh, this nightmare. Some people call it night terrors, but it was a nightmare. Demonic spirits in the nightmare that I was, I was so afraid, I'm telling you, I knew. Now, I knew because of my teaching. See, I, I knew because of the way... Listen, you got to get a hold of this. I knew, even in the dream, when these demonic spirits came in, I knew that if I could say in the name of Jesus that they would have to leave. Okay? So I knew that. I'd been raised that way. But the fear so grip, uh, uh, gripped my heart that it paralyzed me. I, I, I couldn't say anything. I mean, I, I struggled, I struggled. I, uh, my brother finally started waking me up because he heard me going, J -j 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 -j. <laughs> literally, that's what was, I was trying to say Jesus, and he woke me up, and that was the first time that that happened. Now, what happened after I went home, it continued to happen once every few months. Once every, I never even talked to my parents about it during that time. Once every few months, this, I mean, nightmare, terror, demonic spirits, paralyzed with fear just man so when we got married when jennifer and i got married uh we were 20 years old i told her i said now listen this happens occasionally um you may hear me in the middle of the night start going J -j 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 -j. <laughs> kind of sound like roscoe p coltrane off of dukes of hazard <laughs> so i said i said what's happening now there's these demonic spirits and i said and and and, and I'm just afraid. I, you got to wake me up. And she looked at me like, okay. I waited till after we were married to tell her about that, by the way. And, uh, and so anyhow, that happened. And sure enough, she'd be waking me up, all of that. Finally, I got, I got to where I had enough of it. Now listen. Okay, so I, this is what I want you to get. The Bible says that we have authority to cast out devils. The Bible says, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. The Bible talks about all these things. I believe that. But yet, there was a disconnect. This is where I'm talking about the rubber meets the road. Your life governed by the Word of God. Okay? So there was a disconnect. I didn't, and, and I, didn't, I, I didn't need to go to somebody and, and, and get them to pray for me. Hey, would you pray that these devils would stop leaving me alone? There's nothing wrong with that. But I recognized, pay attention here for a second, I, I recognized that, that there was something going on on the inside of me. Because I don't care if I'm, a, if I'm asleep, if I'm awake, I, I gotta be in a situation, uh, I, I should, the Spirit of God should rule, I don't care where, it don't matter. Demons shouldn't be able to come in while I'm asleep and torment me. Not a child of God. They have no legal right over me. All right? And see, and this is what happens in a lot of believers' life. Lord, why, why isn't this happening? Why isn't this? You know, I'll talk to somebody. I'll tell them, hey, hey, you know, they say, what are you doing today? I say, I'm about to go cast out a devil. Somebody's got a devil. Oh, oh, really? What's that like? That's a Christian. I say, hey, you want to go with me? No. I don't want, I don't want to see no devil. Demons are real, guys. 
but they ain't got no power or authority over us. So what did I do? I didn't go run into somebody. I just said, all right, we, we, we got a heart issue. Something's going on on the inside of me that isn't convinced about the truth of the Word of God. I can, I can quote the scripture, I can believe the scripture, I can be all of that, but, but, but something, there's a disconnect. So here's what I did. I didn't pray about it. I didn't say, God, what am I supposed to do? God, take this away from me. You remember how Paul prayed, take this thorn in the flesh, which was a devil, away from, you know, that was, and, and God said, my grace is sufficient for you. See, I, I understood that. I went to the word. What does the word say? The word says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The word says that I've been given authority over devils to cast them out. The word says I'm more than a conqueror. And so I took those, I took those scriptures, I took the very word of God itself, and I, I said, I'm gonna start meditating on this. I'm gonna start putting this in. I, I, I gotta, my heart has to be, I know what's true in my born again spirit, but my heart, see, see, see out of your heart, I said out of your heart flow the issues of life. And, 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 so, and so my heart was the one. That's where the fear was residing. See, you get afraid. It's because it says men's, it's in, in Psalm 112, it says men's hearts failed them because of fear. See, so fear, so it's a heart issue. See, so I need my heart. You need your heart governed by the word of God. You've got to make a decision. I'm going to believe what the word says in my, in my heart, not, not up here. I don't care how many scriptures you can quote. I can quote a lot of scripture, but if it's not here, it don't make no difference. And so what I did every, every day, I'd spend some time. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. He's given me authority over devils. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And I just start, med I just start talking about that. I want to make sure that my heart's getting it. My heart's getting it, right? And so what happened was uh, uh, the next time it happened, fear. I couldn't say it, but I felt like I was closer. It's like that chair, if, if I can cross that finish line, it's like if I started here, the next time I felt like I was here. And I was like, well, we're making some progress. Greater is he that's in me than he. God has not given me. And I kept at it. And then the next time it happened, a little bit closer. I just felt like I was, uh, that there was less fear. But I didn't give up. I didn't say, God, what? No, uh-uh, uh-uh. See, th this is where Christians miss, miss it. They, they want to be so passive about things. Put the word in. Choose to believe the word. We're talking about your life. Live your life according to the kingdom of God. And I kept at it and I kept, and it took me about a year. And a year. Are you willing, are you willing to so commit to living by the word of God that it'll take you a year to persuade your heart concerning some things? Do you have the patience? The, he through, the Bible says through faith and patience we inherit the promises of God. Do you have enough patience? Do you have that patience to allow your faith to produce in your life and to cause the word of God to come to pass? And so what happened after about a year, one night, guess what? Here come those little devils again. Fear gripped me, but with great effort, I said, Jesus. And they disappeared, and I woke up, and I went, yeah! <laughs> And then a few months later, they tried it again. Guess what? Now, now guess what? My faith had, in my experience had produced hope. See, now, because I had stepped over into something, now I've got other forces at work now. And so what happened is I was able to say it again. Some fear, but said it again, they're gone. A little bit longer time. They finally came back, but guess what? Too late now, I done found out. I'm done convinced of the truth in the name of Jesus. And so this went on for about another year and then they stopped. Now, fast forward, uh, 22 years ago, um, we were down at the beach and I was taking an afternoon nap and guess what? Them little punk devils decided they're gonna try it one more time. And when they came in, there was a little bit of fear, but I just knew, I just said, no, in the name of Jesus. Guys, 
everything changed. Everything, the whole thing. I didn't wake up. A whole thing changed. Everything became white. The atmosphere was so thick. It was thick like water, but I knew it was love. Listen, the love of God isn't, isn't a feeling. It's not an emotion. It is a tangible force that will fill, that will fill you, that will fill a room. I'm telling you, I was waiting. I was just in the midst of this thick love that just permeated. And then all of a sudden, Jesus was there. And he said three things. And it, in, in that dreamlike state, it's like he was holding me. Like, he, you know, that kind of thing. He said, they're gone. Sorry, I get emotional every time. They're gone. They'll never bother you again. And I have to leave now. And I woke up. And that was 22 years ago. And I've never had a problem since. They've never bothered me since. Now, but what if, what if I had not made the decision? This is what I want you to get. What if I had not made the decision to live my life according to the Word? To let the Word persuade my heart? What if I had just given up and said, I guess I'm just going to have to live with this for the rest of my life? What if I ended up saying, I guess I better go see a psychiatrist. Maybe they can medicate me. Maybe they can do this. What if, what if, what if, I, what if I was conformed to this world's way of thinking... I wouldn't be standing here today. But because I knew that I could live my life governed by the Word of God, that the incorruptible seed of the Word of God, which abides forever, would change me. I got testimony after testimony after testimony. But that's one example of how to take the Word and to apply it in your life so that you start experiencing the heaven that you have already been moved into in every area. You're called to be a child. Amen. Amen. You're called to be a king. You're called to live in victory. You are called to live his life on the earth. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Father, we thank you. What a privilege. What a privilege. What a privilege that even today and every day that we can call you Father. What a privilege to to not have to wonder what your will is for our life. What a privilege. What a privilege to be able to live according to your word that is forever settled in heaven. And that when we choose just just to trust you, to be like Abraham, fully persuaded that what you promised, you are able to perform in our life. That your promise of eternal life here on the earth, that your promise of a better life, that your promise of great plans and all of that isn't something that, 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 that we'll eventually get to, but Father, that we can uh, just, as we choose to let our life be governed by you and your word, oh, we can just step right into the destiny that you have for each and every one of us. Father, what a privilege. What a privilege. And I'm just going to say, any, anybody watching by live stream or that's here to, today, I mean, just to examine for a moment. Examine for a moment. And say, maybe it's time to make a decision. I'm going to let my life be governed by the King's Word, the Word of the Kingdom. I'll seek first the Kingdom of God in my life. I'm, I'll let, allow it to rise up from within me, those laws that are written on my heart by the Holy Spirit to begin to govern my life. I'll begin to mix faith with the Word of God and trust it and believe it. And if that means making some lifestyle changes and making some different decisions and stop doing things certain ways, Why would you want the fruit of your own labor when you can have the fruit of His? Let me say it again. Why would you want the fruit of your own labor when you can have the fruit of Jesus' work operating in you? Just make that decision in your heart in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. So, Lord, we we worship you and we honor you. We, 
We make these decisions right now in Jesus' name. Let our life be governed by the Word. And we trust you. We honor you. And we thank you that we are your children. And the blessing of Abraham is on us. In Jesus' name. We'll no longer look to the past. No longer be defined by the way that the world would try to define us. That's not our identity. We're not going to be conformed to that. We're, we're, our identity now is just firmly rooted in being your child, being in your kingdom, having an inheritance and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And, and we'll begin to think like that, live like that, talk like that, allow that to be our identity in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Can you say amen? Would you stand with me, please? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Living the changed life, this is what it's about. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.